What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for June 19th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Happy Juneteenth to everyone. While it's still a relatively new federal holiday, uh, it is something that's been celebrated for years. So while you're enjoying your day off and, and having a cookout or whatever it is you have planned today, be sure to do something productive for society, even if that means taking a look and and educating yourself on the history of Juneteenth, what it means, um, why we're celebrating and all that. But like I said, be sure through whatever you do today, do something productive for the betterment of society. Um, Like I said, just even learning about the history of Juneteenth today would be a good start. So happy Juneteenth, everyone. A little bit of a sad note. Uh, Eagles Hall of Fame tackle Bob Brown passed away over the weekend. Uh, Bob was a Hall of Famer for both the college and NFL. He played five seasons with the Eagles three times. He made the Pro Bowl with them. He made six Pro Bowls in general. From 1964 to 1968, he played with the Eagles, so he was on some pretty not very good teams. Uh, But he was their second pick overall, second pick. He was the second pick overall in 1964. He was inducted into the Eagles Hall of Fame. I remember that night that they did that. Uh, He was also a member of the NFL's all-decade team from the 60s. Uh, So condolences to his family, his former teammates, uh, everybody within the Eagles organization who knew him. He was 81. Uh, Not necessarily a sad note, but former Sixer Lou Williams retired over the weekend as well. Uh, He was drafted number 45 overall in the second round by the Sixers back in 2005. He played seven seasons in Philly, and he's one of those guys that ended up being better elsewhere. Um, He was sort of the poster child, I I think, for... Uh, Maybe not the poster child, but he was one of the core guys from that purgatory team that led to the process where they were a 7-8 seed or just out of the playoffs and not necessarily getting the the lottery pick. Um, He was a three-time six-man of the year, played for six teams in his career. Uh, Didn't realize he played 17 years. That just time flies, man. But shout out to Lou Williams and congratulations on your retirement. All right, quick Phillies update. They won again, six in a row. They swept the the A's out in Oakland, coming home for a nice day off today. Um, Zach Wheeler went six innings, uh, gave up no runs, four strikeouts. He didn't look sharp, but it, he definitely battled through and, and, and was able to to overcome the struggles he had yesterday. Schwarber was, remains hot. He went three for four, led off the game with a home run. Uh Right, and the Braves won again too. So they, unfortunately, during this hot streak, they have not made up much ground in the standings. However, they're four games over 500 with a big series starting tomorrow night down at Citizens Bank Park against those Braves. Be nice to take t- at least two out of three from them. Um, but man, they they I was watching some of their game before the Phillies yesterday. They are just they're rolling right now as well. So it should be a fun series, good rivalry. Um, might even have a little bit of an electric postseason feel to it down there this week. So looking forward to the Phillies this week. All right, before we get into today's episode, I have to say I got two shirts from phillygoat.com yesterday for Father's Day. And I have to say that they're amazing. Um, I got the Joe Fre- or the Mr. Sandman's gym and uh, instead of the AI ear cup i got the the fanatic one with uh the major league baseball logo with his amazing shirts fit great just comfortable um i know father's day father's day is over but you guys have done a great job since we've been um, partnering with them buying shirts if you haven't done so go check them out what a great selection uh the like i said they're comfortable shirts they, they don't shrink, uh, they fit nicely, uh, and they're just amazing designs. So go to phillygoat.com, check them out. Uh, I will try to wear one of them later this week so you guys can actually see the quality and see the fit. But phillygoat.com, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right, we're going to go back to the Sixers today. And on this day, June 19th, 1984, the Sixers had the number five pick in the NBA draft. Yes, they were just one season removed from winning the championship, 
But they had the fifth pick in this draft uh, back from a trade they made in 1978 with the Clippers that sent World Be Free to to them in exchange for this pick. Um, it's like some Howie Roseman type stuff that uh, that the Sixers front office was doing back then because they they've had the uh, a high pick that or they had the number one overall pick two years later and they were still a playoff team. But um, I don't want to get into that number one pick. If you want more on that number one pick, check out Back to the Future. That's Back to the Future with a PH. Uh, we talk all about that 86 offseason and the Sixers and, and what it did to that team. But on this day, they selected Charles Barkley out of Auburn. Um, and before we get into Charles, just take a look at the top of that draft. Three of the first five picks are three of the greatest players to ever play the game. Michael Jordan. Hakeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley. Uh, It's just amazing how top-heavy that draft was. But Charles played eight seasons in Philly, averaged 23.3 points per game. Uh, He is their all-time leading rebounder. Now, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that because there are two guys that have more rebounds than him in franchise history, but Dolph Shays and Red Kerr got most of their rebounds when they were the Syracuse Nationals. Um... But he, unfortunately for Charles, after that, um, after the draft, like he came into a team that had Dr. J, Moses Malone, Mo Cheeks, Andrew Tony, uh, that was built to contend for a championship, and they were good. They they made the playoffs during the early times. But after that, after Dr. J retired, after uh, Mo Cheeks left, after Moses was traded away, after they. Blew the the 1998 or 1986 first round number one overall pick. There was never much around him, and that ultimately is what led to his him leaving and, and requesting to trade. He was just sick of the the team not necessarily building anything around him, um, and he kind of pushed his way out to Phoenix. Then, uh, but I mean, he he was a Hall of Famer, number retired by the Sixers. Uh, one of the more fun nights I, I remember. Well, I was down there that game uh, with my buddy Hoppy uh, and I guess some of his brothers. And I forget, there was a couple other people with us, but um, my buddy Corey, too, probably. But the, the night they retired, his number was actually pretty special because, I mean, that was the kid, the guy we grew up as kids watching. And I just remember being so frustrated when they traded him because it just those teams were absolutely dreadful after that. I mean, even the, what they got back was. Just a bunch of slop. It was almost like the process without like Sam Hinkie running and having a plan for it. They just blew draft picks and just uh, it, they were a hot mess for a while. But Barkley, one of my all time favorites, one of the best to ever do it. Um, he's just as good, I think, on TV as he was as a player. So on this day, back in 1984, Charles Barkley was drafted number five overall by the Sixers. I would say he had a pretty successful career in Philadelphia. So, Sir Charles, shout out to you, my man. All right. Phillies play the Braves this week. It is rivalry month, and it's a great time for it. Today we're going to move back to hockey and take a look at the New York Rangers. Uh, the, The battle is Broad Street versus Broadway, they always say. And this is one of the top rivalries in the entire NHL. Uh... Regular season, the Rangers lead 142, 125, 37, and 11. Um, but in the postseason, the Flyers hold a 30 to 24 edge. They have met 11 times in the postseason, and it is the team that the uh, Flyers have played the most in series and games in the postseason. So there definitely is a lot of animosity there. They first met in 1974 in the playoffs, and then from 79. The 78-79 season to the 86-87 season, seven of those nine years, the Flyers and Rangers played in the the playoffs against each other, having mixed success. Uh, One one year the Flyers would win, next year the Rangers. Um, Flyers do hold that edge 6-5 in those series. The latest coming in 2014 in the first round um, where the Rangers won. However, the big... Uh, the, that 2010 Stanley Cup final team almost, I completely forgot about this, almost didn't even make the playoffs. 
had to beat the Rangers on the last day of the season to even get in and then just went on that magical run. I just remember how upset Rangers fans were. I think that game even went into overtime. Um, but, I mean, you have the geography going for this rivalry. You have the division. You have the postseason history. You just, uh, I mean, they've just so, so many times. They met in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and now the 2000s. Like, they just kind of almost like the, the Penguins, but just with a deeper history. So, if I'm going to have to score this, I, I can't, I, I cannot, I have to give it a 5 out of 5. Um any team from New York that we play, uh, division rival, kind of, there's something, it, it gets amped up a lot because it's New York. So Flyers-Rangers rivalry, I will give a 5 out of 5. Like I said, it's one of the top in the NHL. They Teams don't like each other. It's, it's always fun when they play. Um, hopefully, we're going to see the Flyers start turning things around because obviously it's always better to play your rival when you're both good. Um, but... Flyers, Rangers, 5 out of 5. Let me know what you think. If you're listening on Spotify, I'll have the question posted when I when I upload this. On this day, we drafted Charles Barkley. He had a tumultuous uh, eight years here, but uh, just was never able to get over the hump because the team was never built around him. Phil's get a much-needed day off to get prepped for that Braves series. Don't forget to go to phillygoat.com. Like I said, the shirts are, are well worth it. Happy Juneteenth. Go do something productive today. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Monday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.